Hey guys, it's Veron from Speaker of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing another traditional piece and we are doing the next installment for the Flora series for the month of May. So the flower for the month of May is the Lily of the Valley and it supposedly represents love, appreciation, passion, beauty, perfection, humility, chastity, and the return of happiness. So I latched on to that last point because it seemed interesting and it seems to correspond a lot to weddings and the flower seems to be used a lot for like I guess fillers for like the bouquet or for the decorations but not really the main flower and so I, I latched onto that because the other meanings seem to be sort of common to most flowers in the series or I guess flowers in general um, so I wanted to latch onto something that is sort of unique to that flower. So for me, or for the Lily of the Valley, it was that wedding theme. And I sort of, the moment I read it said that it was used for weddings, I sort of immediately had an image of what vibe or what kind of drawing I wanted to do for it. So I just wanted it. So it's really interesting because, huh, May in weddings, huh? Weddings in May, rather. Um, I guess there are weddings in May here in the Philippines, but I guess it's not super the best condition because like May is usually like the the dead center of summer, so it's like the hottest, most grueling time of the year. It's like gonna be super hot. You're gonna be super sweaty, and since the Philippines is predominantly Catholic, like. Imagine sitting in a church for one hour plus in that sweltering heat. Nowadays, like the temperature in the Philippines, so it's May right now, right? Um, it just reaches 34, 35 degrees on most days. And like that's probably not even the worst of it. I think last year, last year we had like up to 40, I think. Like 37 to 40-ish degrees Celsius. And damn, that's so hot. <laughs> and like imagine being in your wedding dress, like and your makeup's just melting and your poor guest, someone someone might get a heat stroke. So there are weddings in May, but um it's kind of torture to be honest. Uh, most weddings here are usually done in I guess around September to February because like those are the cool months and it's not the rainy season so the rainy season would start from or it used to it used to start from july ish and would end around mm, i guess around august to september so like the september season to february there's a lot less rain or that's how the weather used to work nowadays like it's just completely screwed up but but it's the coolest season it's not hot it's not wet so there were a lot of weddings in those months. So like, um, I guess it became tradition of sorts. So yeah, that's that's like, that's our thing here. <laughs> so for for this drawing, I wanted to be a little bit more intricate and a little bit more um, focused on aesthetic, I guess, because I wanted to add like lace and I wanted it to be obvious it's lace. I wanted to add like golden details and golden curlicues um how they put it because like for the past four drawings the like the background or the elements in the piece would usually focus a lot on the person and the flowers and i wouldn't add too much extra detail in fear that it would overwhelm or it would steal the spotlight from what i'm trying to focus on but because this weddings and weddings are usually pretty lush and luxurious um i wanted to add those golden details to make it feel like she's a princess this day or this her golden day or something like that so it looked like you noticed but um the golden details at the side of the at the edge of the framing of the piece that are also the of the valley flowers because uh, it's in the bouquet but it's not super obvious but I wanted to incorporate the flower a bit more so I added that as well and this part I was a little bit nervous because 
uh, when working on the lace, I wasn't really sure if it, if it would translate well to being nice and delicate. Because when I googled how to draw lace, like usually they do it in like a black pen, and it's really detailed and heavy. So I felt like it might look like too gothic, I guess. When I wanted to go with like with a white dress with cute white lace. Now, if this piece wasn't done with line art, I feel like I would have been able to pull it off somehow, like with a white gel pen or something. But because the Flora series in general all comes lined, or I usually do lines on them, I had to do the details in black ink. And I guess because I've been switching to the point one nib instead of the point three, it really helped balance out the thickness of the of the ink because i used to complain about it a lot i would want to do like really delicate and detailed stuff but i didn't realize at the time that using a 0.3 nib was really thick it and it made the piece heavy and so i would do some i sometimes do works without the line art with just like colored pencil maybe or just the watercolor paint itself and then I would realize that, hey, the black ink or the line art's like sort of interfering with how the piece supposed to look, is supposed to look. And when I started doing the Flora series, because the canvas is so small, I ended up trying using the point one nib. And I sort of realized that it wasn't because the line art was heavy, it was because the pen nib that I was using was too thick. And I've been practicing trying to do that, so I've been trying to do more delicate, softer works. And because I love line art, I couldn't really stop doing it. <laughs> I guess for a quick fun point of discussion in the comment section, so comment your answer to this. Were you the type of person that when they were young, or maybe even now, um, fantasize or plan out your dream wedding? Because funnily enough, me and my mom uh, both don't. And my mom, because she's like, she didn't really plan to get married because of some health issues. Uh, the only thing she said she planned out for her wedding when she was super young was this really nice dress she saw in a magazine. But it's the only thing she ever thought about of it but when she was like when she grew older she didn't really plan for it so she didn't really like have any even fantasies for it and i guess because she raised me i also don't really have those fantasies like i do fantasize or i do love looking at and watching weddings but because it's because like i i love fashion design and when I was really young, I had a lot of dream jobs. Like, I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be an astronomer of sorts. Um, and the other thing, the last thing I remembered was I wanted to be a fashion designer. And I sort of forgot about that dream when I started applying for college. And I went the practical route of sorts. And so I graduated two courses in college, if you don't know by now. Um, one was... For development studies which is involved with um how do i explain it so like the ngos and the government and if you want to like help develop the country like that's sort of how that course aligns to it um it's like providing solutions or managing the world of sorts um and then for my second so I, for, I finished that in four years and then uh it took two extra years to take a graphics design course in the same university and it was there that I sort of remembered that I like art and design because I, I do art, I do like illustration and anime, fan art and stuff like that all throughout my life but the actual designer part of it, I guess it revived when I started going to graphic design and like a friend of mine there she was telling me, hey, when we both graduate, do you want to, like, maybe enroll into the government courses for graphic design or, like, fashion design? Um, because the government here offers, like, supplementary classes on, I guess, I think, I think it's, like, Saturdays, like, 
baking, tailoring, welding. So, like, skills-based stuff. And I sort of want to get into that. I don't know if my friend continued with that plan, but um, recently I've been looking into, like, buying art and fashion books. I'm following, like, two fashion channels on YouTube right now that talks about fashion design. And... I don't know. Like I said, I'm a, I sort of want to learn a bit more of that. Because when I was young. So, I have a character design series, right? And on YouTube right now. And I made like 12 plus characters. For the sole purpose of designing clothes for them. And, I don't know. I just like loved doing sets of clothing for them. They weren't particularly good outfits, by the way. But, I just love drawing clothes and then I sort of forgot about that for a while for some reason. I, I got into role play, I got into anime and doing fan art and recently I sort of, I'm sort of trying to revive and work on the skill and love for character design again. That's why I have that entire character design series on my channel right now. But yeah, um, I sort of digressed a bit from the weddings, didn't I? <laughs> uh, but yes, that's my love for character designing. Totally off topic. It's supposed to be about weddings. But yeah, I didn't really plan out like what flowers to use for my wedding or what dress I would wear. I just thought about it because I wanted to design clothes for it. And I guess I want to try getting back into that somehow. I mean, fashion design, not, not, not weddings, I guess. <laughs> So perhaps I should talk about a little bit of the process of this piece. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's my usual colored pencil work. And one thing I haven't really learned yet with colored pencil is how to cover a large amount of space evenly. That was my problem with the last drawing for April. Um, like when I do the sky or the background, there'd be like big spaces of, I guess, space to color in. And I never really haven't, or not never, I haven't really found out how to properly cover that space without making it look patchy. I've been trying to use like the um, pencil blender of sorts, but I guess it's meant for wax and not oil, so it tends to be a bit scratchy. Uh, but yeah, I want to learn how to like make it look even and stuff. I sort of figured it out a little bit by pressing that on the pencil a bit more and adding more pigment to it but it's not the most efficient or elegant way of elegant way of going about it so i need to watch more videos i guess <laughs> so for this piece i was going for the blushing bride concept of sorts so i wanted to go with really lush i think i mentioned this earlier like lush details lush colors golds I gave her like this really nice orangey hair and like she has this nice little reddish blush on her cheeks because she's so happy she's getting married maybe and I gave her a nice white dress and I kind of feel really like this piece it's really how about put this it feels really balanced because like for the other pieces it was it was a bit heavy February was one of the other pieces that I really liked but um and a was it April was departure April yeah, I think. I like those pieces because the balance felt great. But for some other pieces in in October to like not October, um for flower series, um I felt like I put too much detail and the focus and the balance of the piece was a bit heavy. But yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like or subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. Um I do a lot of art stuff on this channel. Uh follow me on Facebook, Instagram and even Twitter as well for whips and sneak peeks and I'll see you around.